welcome to TSAT. This is Dr. Madhuri from Government Degree College, Husseini Alam. Today we are here to learn about the topic microbes as food. As we know, our country is second most populous country in the world with a population of around 120 crores. With such a high population, we are facing problem for food. We are facing malnutrition cases. Malnutrition in case of protein deficiency is a major factor for mortality and morbidity in our country as well as other countries in the world. As population is increasing rapidly, we are facing protein deficiency. So, there should be some way to overcome this protein deficiency. In that direction, our scientists has come up with alternative sources of protein. They are nothing but mushrooms as well as single cell proteins. Now, we will deal each topic one by one. Coming to the mushrooms, what are mushrooms? Mushrooms are fruiting bodies of fungi belonging to the class Basidiomycetes. They exhibit different shapes such as button, fan or umbrella shaped and they are rich in proteins, vitamins and minerals that is why they are called as energy rich foods. <coughs> Coming to the type of mushrooms, in the world there are many types of mushrooms but only 100 species are of edible type. Of these 100 species, only few are cultivated on large scale. Let us see some of the examples. Agaricus bisporus, the common name is white button mushroom, Lentinus edodus, Shitek or Japanese mushroom, Volveriella volvesi, common name is Padistro mushroom or Chinese mushroom, Pleurotus sojar kaju common name is dhingri or Indian oyster mushroom, Pleurotus oysteratus, common name is American oyster mushroom, Auricularia polytrica, common name is juice ear mushroom, Folioto namico, it is commonly known as namico mushroom. These are few types of mushrooms which are edible. Now, we should know what is the importance of mushrooms? Why we have to study about mushrooms? As we all know, mushrooms are popular in many countries. Their nutritional value is equal to meat products. And in countries like India, Taiwan, Japan, Korea and Thailand, they are having the highest global export rates. And these can be grown easily using cheap substrates and we can produce these mushrooms on large scale and Mushrooms consist of 88.5 percent water and 3.2 percent protein. This is the composition of fresh mushrooms whereas in dried form
high protein content that is up to 33 to 44 percent and the proteins which are present in mushrooms will have all essential amino acids and the important factor is the digestibility of these proteins is very high that is up to 70 percent. Mushrooms will have 4.2 to 4.4 percent carbohydrates and the fiber content is same as in vegetables. <coughs> fat content, the fat content is very less that is 0.3 percent which is lesser than fish, meat, egg or milk and the fat present in mushrooms will have a compound called ergosterol which is helpful for the synthesis of vitamin D. Apart from this, mushrooms also contain high amount of thymine, riboflavin, niacin and ascorbic acid. Mushrooms will also contain minerals such as calcium, phosphorus, iron, sodium and potassium. Interesting fact is if we take 100 grams of mushrooms per day, it will suffice our body requirements of proteins, vitamins and minerals. Now let us have a look at the medicinal value. The mushrooms as we have seen they are having very less amount of fat that is 0.3 percent. So they can be given to the patients suffering from hypolipidemia and hypercholesterolemia. Hypolipidemia means high blood lipids and hypercholesterolemia means high blood cholesterol. We have seen these also contain less sugars or carbohydrates that is 4 percent. With this they become ideal food for diabetic patients. And one mushroom called Lentinus edotus are showing anti-tumor and anti-viral properties. These properties are due to presence of lentinans and emitanin 1 compounds. Likewise, Pleurotus sojar kaju is also expressing anti-tumor activity. Lentinus edotus, apart from anti-tumor activity, it is also helpful in reducing high blood pressure, gallstones and numbness of hands and feet. Coming to the advantages of mushrooms. Mushrooms can be cultivated using cheap agricultural waste, black soils, paper waste, etc. With this, the production cost will be very less. And we need very small space for the cultivation of mushrooms. There is no need of any sophisticated instruments, fermenters or any complicated chemicals. And one more advantage is if we guide the farmers, they can grow mushrooms very easily and earn their livelihood. These mushrooms can be substituted for conventional protein sources. And they are the suitable protein source for undernourished poor people. As poor people cannot afford for animal protein, they can use these mushrooms or have these mushrooms and they can improve their health. Mushrooms converts agro waste into good quality manure to enrich fertility of soil. Using these mushrooms, we can produce more protein per unit area compared to agriculture or any other technology which is presently available with us. It is estimated that 300 million tons of mushrooms can be produced by just using one fourth of world's annual yield of straw. It is also estimated that 
we can produce around 317 million metric tons of mushrooms annually by which we can provide 197 grams of fresh mushroom daily to each person of the world. Mushrooms are definitely nutrient rich foods, but sometimes some mushrooms they can cause discomfort in the addition to the person. So how to avoid this discomfort while eating mushrooms? First thing is we should avoid any other indigestible food along with the mushrooms and we should also avoid alcohol. If a person is having particular species of mushroom for the first time, they should have in very less quantity to check the acceptability of the body to that mushroom. Now one more important aspect of mushrooms is poisonous mushrooms. We have heard that there are poisonous mushrooms also. Actually the toxins or the poison of mushrooms is due to presence of toxins in the mushroom. The mushrooms which are not compatible or which are not good for humans, which are not accepted by the human body are called as poisonous mushrooms or toadstools. Mushroom toxin can cause many disorders and even sometimes death. Generally speaking, mushrooms which are growing on trees and rotten animal materials should be forbidden. These are some, are some of the examples of poisonous mushrooms and the toxins which are present in that mushroom. Amanita, Amanita phalloides, common name is death cap. The toxins present are phallotoxins and amatoxin. Amanita verna, common name is fool's cap. <coughs> Toxin present in it is phallotoxins and amatoxin. Amanita virosa, common name is destroying angel. Toxins present are phallotoxins and amatoxin. Amanita muscaria, common name is fly fungus. Toxins present are muscarin, ibatonic acid, mucimol, and mucasazone. Gallerina autumnalis, Gallerina venerita, Gallerina salsiceps. All these mushrooms are having cyclopeptides. Helvella esculenta is having gyrometrin in it. Cotinarius oral nanus, common name is inky cap. It is having a toxin called orylanin. Tricholoma muscarium is having tricholomic acid and psilocybe mexicana, the common name is sacred fungi, is having psilocybin and psilocin toxins in it. Now we came to know there are poisonous mushrooms. We should also know how to identify these poisonous mushrooms. Poisonous mushrooms are usually brightly in color. We can see greenish tinge on gills and spores will be yellow to green or pink in color. Usually they, we can see the vulva and annulus on the stalk and in some cases we can also see oozing of milky latex from the damaged portions of the mushroom and in some cases unpleasant odor can also be seen. These are the pictures of some of the poisonous mushrooms. So we have to be careful not to have such kind of mushrooms. Now let us understand what are the symptoms of mushroom poisoning. First and foremost thing is <coughs> symptoms of mushroom poisoning appear only after 8 to 24 hours. So by that time mushrooms gets digested 
and absorbed by our body. <coughs> so, in such cases, <coughs> vomiting or stomach wash is of no help in saving the patient. Symptoms seen are nervous disorder, gastric disorder, hemolysis, muscular disorder, damage to liver cells. Mostly, if a person consumes poisonous mushrooms, usually it will lead to death. So, how to avoid poison mushroom poisoning? We should not take wild mushrooms, we should not gather wild mushrooms because by doing so, we there is every chance of collecting poisonous mushrooms by mistake. So, we have to avoid gathering wild mushrooms. We should also avoid diseased mushrooms, aged mushrooms and insect infested mushrooms. We should not have mushrooms in raw form and eating mushrooms in bulk quantities should also be avoided. <coughs> now, let us see the morphology of a mushroom. Here, we can see the umbrella kind of structure. This is the cap and this is the stalk. This is called as cap or pileus. <coughs> and the remnants of wheel are present on the cap, they are called as scales. On the inner side of the cap or pileus, there are gills. Inner to this gills, there will be basidiospores on basidia. These basidiospores, when cap opens, they will fall onto the ground and they help in reproduction process. This is called as annulus. This is the covering or veil which is present on the gills. When gills open, the remnants of the veil will be present at the base of the cap in the form of annulus. And this is the stipe or stalk of the mushroom, and this is volvo. This volvo is remnants of veil which was covering the entire mushroom when it is in younger in its development. These are the general parts of the mushroom. <coughs> now, let us see different types of mushrooms. As we have seen there are many types, but three types they are agaricus, volveriella and pleurotus. These mushrooms are grown on large scale in our country. Let us see the basic differences between these three mushrooms. Coming to the fruiting body, it is umbrella shaped in agaricus and volveriella and fan like in pleurotus. Pileus is 5 to 10 centimeters in agaricus. 6 to 12 centimeters in volveriella and 5 to 10 centimeters in pleurotus. Gills can be pink or brown in agaris, agaricus, pink colored in volveriella, white or gray in pleurotus. Stipe is central and long in both agaricus and volveriella and it is lateral and indistinguishable in pleurotus. Annulus is present only in agaricus whereas absent in remaining both mushrooms and vulva is absent in agaricus and pleurotus and it is cup shaped and present in volveriella species. <coughs> now, we have to study different types of uh, cultivation of padistra mushroom. Padistra mushroom common name is volveriella vol volvesia. Uh, here three species are grown, Volveriella volvesia, Volveriella esculenta and Volveriella displacia. These padistra mushrooms are usually grown in greenhouses, shaded rooms or open land. The substrates used for production of 
This mushroom are paddy straw, water hyacinth, oil palm bunch, oil palm pericarp waste, etc. Now let us see spawn making. First we have to understand what is spawn. Fungal mycelia grown on suitable grains is called spawn or it can be called as inoculum in other words. We can use different grains for production of spawn such as sorghum, wheat, rice, rye, whatever grain we use. They must be washed properly, soaked in water overnight. Later on we have to cook them and we have to spread them on cheese cloth to remove the excess water. After that we have to mix 2 percent calcium carbonate with these grains. Then 200 grams of grains should be filled in bottles and the mouth of the bottle should be plugged. Bottles must be autoclaved at 121 degree centigrade for 30 minutes and then cooled. After cooling pure mycelium or spores of Volvariella can be inoculated. After inoculation incubation is done at 25 degree centigrade for 10 to 12 days. The mycelium growth can be seen on grains. So, this is called as spawn. Now, till now we have produced, we have seen the production of spawn that is inoculum kind of thing. Now, we have to see the production process how to produce mushroom. This can be done by three methods, in that first one is bed method. Now, let us understand this bed method. Out of all the substrates we have discussed, paddy straw is giving highest yield. So, here we are seeing the production of Volvariella species using paddy straw bundles. First, we have to make the paddy straw into bundles and then we have to soak them in water for overnight that is 18 to 24 hours and then water should be drained off. We have to prepare beds in dimensions of 1 meter into 1 meter and we have to place the paddy straw on the bed up to the height of 30 centimeters. On this layer we have to put one more layer of paddy straw in the opposite direction and then spawn must be added in the pits made on the second layer. The pits should be at the depth of 10 centimeters. After adding the spawn third layer must be added at right angles and then fourth layer is added to the opposite direction. <coughs> Fifth layer is added and then covered with paddy straw. <coughs> now, bed has been prepared. This bed we have to press to remove the excess water and then these beds must be kept in greenhouse where the temperature can be 30 to 40 degrees. After keeping in greenhouse we have to cover them with polythene sheet and incubate for 7 to 10 days. After 10 days we can see small pinheads growing on the bed. After this we can harvest the mushroom. Harvesting can be done when vulva is about to rupture or just ruptured. And the third method is, second method is polythene bag method. Here we have to put the paddy straw into the polythene. Before putting it into the polythene, we have to cut the paddy straw into 2 to 5 centimeters length pieces. Again we have to soak them for 18 to 24 hours, then water should be drained off, then it should be mixed with spawn and then we have to fill it in the polythene bags and the mouth should be tied. We have to make small holes on the 
entire surface of the polythene bag for gaseous exchange and they should be kept in glass house where temperature and humidity can be regulated. After one week we have to remove uh, the bags and we have to water them with a flower can. We can see the growth of small pin heads on the polythene bags. After 10 days we can see fully mature fruiting bodies growing on this bags. And this is the third method that is field cultivation. Usually in European countries this method is adopted for growing Volvariella species. Here after getting the crop, after harvesting the crop from the field, whatever agroves are there, they are dumped in the field in the form of ridge. And then these agroves are mixed with spawn and then covered with a layer of soil then leaf litter is placed at the top to avoid drying and after that it is watered by a sprinkler. As usual after one week we can see small pin heads growth on the substrate. After 10 days the mature floating bodies can be seen. Using this method the yield is very low. but it is adding compost to the field. Till now we have seen paddy straw mushroom. Now we have to see the cultivation of oyster mushroom. Oyster mushroom scientific name is Pleuritus sajur kaju. It is grown in India on large scale. Its cultivation requires little ventilation and light. Here the spawn production will be same as paddy straw mushroom that is by using grains we have to produce the mushroom spawn and substrates we, ha we can use different agricultural ways for this production but we have seen that paddy straw is giving maximum production of mushrooms. So, Paddy straw is preferred for oyster mushroom production. Scientist by name Kati Jayani, along with his associates in 1996, have grown oyster mushrooms in vermicompost along with paddy straw. In this method, we have to see the pre treatment of the substrate. Here, as I said, we, have, we are using paddy straw. First we have to cut them into 3 to 5 centimeters piece, pieces. We have to soak them overnight and then we have to cook them in boiling water at 30 to 40, for 30 to 45 minutes. Some people prefer to add 2 percent lime at this stage because it is, produ it is giving higher produce. And after cooking we have to remove excess water and we have to spread them on gunny cloth or riced wire mesh. Water content we have to check by squeezing the substrate between hands. When we are squeezing no drops should come out of the substrate. Then it is believed that the moisture percentage of the substrate is around 75 to 78 percent. So, at this stage the substrate can be used for cultivation. Here uh, we have to go for again spawn production. We can get spawn from the market. If we get one bottle of the spawn which is measures around 200 grams, we have to divide this content into four parts. And we have to take the polythene bag at the base we have to tie with thread. Two holes of 1 centimeter diameter should be done at the base. Then we have to add the paddy straw up to the height of 5 centimeters. Then one part of spawn can be spread. Then second layer of 10 centimeter of substrate is added. Then we have to add second part of the spawn. Then third layer of substrate is added and third part of spawn is 
spread on this substrate. Likewise, fourth part also can be done. At the ending, paddy straw is added up to the height of 5 centimeters. Now, on this cover, we have to make many small holes throughout the surface to provide good aeration and reduce temperature. How to maintain the mushrooms? Maintenance of mushroom beds. The spawn substrate is the mushroom beds can be kept in racks or we can hang them and wherever we are producing mushrooms in that on that floor if we sprinkle water the moisture can be maintained in that room around 80 to 85 percent. Mycelium forms a compact bed of within 12 to 15 days in the substrate. So, polythin bag can be removed after 15 days. Mushroom beds have to be watered twice daily to maintain the temperature of 20 to 30 degrees centigrade. Initially, we can see pinhead stage growth of the mushroom. After that, within 4 days, lobed mushrooms will develop and after that, within 2 days, we can get mature mushrooms. Coming. Coming to the next mushroom that is white button mushroom. It is usually grown in indoor areas where the temperature is less than 25 degrees centigrade. Spawn is same as the paddy straw mushroom. Here we use compost. This compost uh, composition is different according to different scientists. According to National Center for Mushroom Research and Training Salon, they have given the composition of compost as wheat straw 1000 kg, chicken manure 400 kg, brewer's grain 72 kg, urea 14.5 kg and gypsum 30 kg. Whatever be the composition of the compost, after getting, after making the compost, it should be filled in small trays or wooden boxes or plastic bags. <coughs> Then after 6, we have to heat them at 50 to 55 degree centigrade. After 6 to 10 hours, it should be cooled and then filled in trays or plastic bags up to the height of 15 to 20 centimeters. After this, we have to spread the spawn over the compost and it is spread with water to maintain the relative humidity of 70 to 80 percent. We can see pinhead stage growth within 5 to 15 days, then button stage will develop within 7 to 8 days and harvesting can be done after 15 days. Now, let us have a look of different diseases. Even mushrooms will suffer from diseases. These are the list of diseases which can be seen in mushrooms and these are the causative agents. Coming to the storage of mushrooms, as mushrooms are protein rich, very nutritious food, we have to store them with very uh, good care has to be taken while preserving or storing of mushrooms. They can be stored by blanching, it means dipping of mushrooms in hot water, steeping, sun drying, canning, pickling or freeze drying. By storing mushrooms, we can use them for longer period and one more important is recipes of mushroom. How to have this mushrooms? We can make any kind of dish that is puree, paneer or mushroom rice, mushroom omelet, mushroom soup or chicken curries. Whatever we want, we can make out of these mushrooms. And the second topic is single cell protein. The definition of single cell protein is, it is a dried mass of single species of microbe that can be used as protein source in the diet. It means that we are using single cell means microbes as food. That is, they are also called as novel food or mini food. Why we are using these microbes? Because they are high in protein content and other vitamins and minerals also. The organisms which are used for SCP are fungi, yeast, algae and bacteria. Coming to the history, in 1950s, British, British Petroleum Company has started production of 
single cell protein on commercial basis. Protein was the first commercial single cell protein which was used as animal feed additive. It was produced from bacteria Methylophilus methylotrophus, cultured on methanol. The term single cell protein was given by Professor Wilson of Massachusetts Institute of Technology in 1966. It is interesting that in World War I, Saccharomyces cerevisiae is used as protein source and in World War II, Candida utilis was used as protein source. And in India, different institutes are taking up this production of single cell protein on large scale. Some of them are National Botanical Research Institute, Central Food Technological Research Institute, etc. Now let us have a look on the composition of cells. As I said, we can use fungi, algae, yeast and bacteria. They are having different compositions of proteins, fats and nucleic acids. Proteins, as we can see in the table, they are highest in bacteria. Fat is highest in fungi and nucleic acids, it is highest in bacteria again. <coughs> These are some of the examples of algae, fungi and bacteria which can be used as single cell proteins. And now let us see some advantages and disadvantages with every kind of organism which can be used as SCP. Fungi are relatively easy to grow and harvest, but <coughs> growth rate is very slow and protein content is very less. Algae, it is easy to grow and harvest and quality of protein is also good but cellulosic, cellulose is present which is not digestible and heavy concentration of uh, heavy metals is also seen. Coming to the yeast, it is larger in size and nucleic acid content is less, familiarity and acceptability is, is there but the digestibility is less and protein content is also less. Coming to the bacteria, there is high protein content and the cell wall is also digestible. But the problem with the bacteria is nucleic, and nucleic acid content is high and uh, harvest will be difficult. These are the different types of raw materials coming to the agricultural waste, industrial waste, municipal waste and hydrocarbons. All these materials can be used for the production of single cell protein. This table shows the comparison of single cell protein with soybean protein and fish protein which are considered to be so, um, high protein sources. Now let us say percentage of protein, it is 74 in single cell protein whereas 45 and 66 respectively in soya bean and fish protein. And when you compare other factors that is methionine, cysteine, lysine, calcium also it is superior to soya bean protein and fish protein. Coming to the usage of algae as single cell protein. The most important organism which is used on large scale is spirulina. We, ha we might have heard many times spirulina capsules. This spirulina is spirally coiled multicellular filamentous blue green algae. The protein content in this organism is around 67 percent. Along with proteins, they are also having vitamins, minerals and beta carotene. UAS Food and Drug Administration has approved spirulina as human food and animal feed supplement in 1980. In 1821, there was the cultivation of spirulina maxima and they made into biscuits and supplied to the public. It is known as Nuclina spiridox or spirulina in India. These are the constituents of spirulina and how to grow. They can be grown in open tanks and where we can use um, treated sewage water as medium. And due to presence of gas vacuous spirulina usually floats on the surface of the water which makes our harvesting will easy. And after getting the growth of spirulina, we have to wash it with acidified water to remove the toxins and then it should be washed with tap water 
and then after washing it should be spread on polythene sheet and dried in sunlight which can make them into thin flakes and then it can be powdered and packed. As al algae needs uh, like uh, they are autotrophic they require sunlight and temperature must be 35 to 40 degrees pH is 8.5 to 10.5 they can be grown in oxidation pots. Coming to the bacteria and fungal mass they can be grown on wide range of substrates they require temperature of 15 to 34 degrees and pH of 5 to 7. Yeast also can be grown on wide variety of substrates temperature required is 30 to 34 degrees pH of 3.5 to 4.5 and factors affecting the production are time, elimination time, temperature, pH, suitable strain is required, agitation that is mixing of the components is required and sterile conditions are also important. Reduction of nucleic acid content, Nucle due to presence of high amount of nucleic acid it results in gout and kidney stones due to presence of high amount of uric acid. So, this nucleic acid must be removed by chemical or enzymatic methods where there are different chemicals used for this purpose such as alcohol, salts, acids and alkalis and enzymes are used are ribonuclease and nuclease enzymes. Advantages of SCP is we can grow them at higher rate very easily and they are having high protein content of 45 to 83 percent. Production can be continuous and low land requirements is there. Economically it is very beneficial and solar energy is utilized and we can make cellular, molecular and genetic alterations, alterations in the organism. What are the disadvantages? As discussed earlier there are high amount of nucleic acids which leads to elevated levels of uric acid which in turn form kidney stone and gout in the consumer persons. Possibility for the presence of secondary metabolites are there and digestibility is also a problem. Stimulation of gastrointestines and hypersensitivity skin reactions can be seen. Applications, <coughs> they can be used as protein supplements for undernourished children as health food. It controls obesity, it gives instant energy and uh, in medicines it is used to weigh, reduce weight uh, for controlling cholesterol stress low to lower blood sugar and for health of skin and eyes. Beta carotene is there so it is used as anti cancer substances and it increases lactation. It is also used in cosmetics for healthy hair for healthy herbal beauty products bio lipsticks herbal face cream and it is also used as feed for poultry and cattle. We have learnt about different types of mushrooms, poisonous mushrooms, nutritious value, medicinal properties of mushrooms and then we have learnt about what is single cell protein, different organisms used for single cell protein and composition of cells. With this th I take leave. Thank you for patience listening.